guys this is home gun maker again and today I'm gonna show you how to make this gun whoops wrong one I'm joking today I'm going to show you how to make this gun out of paper the technique is called paper craft it is all done folding and gluing regular sheets of paper these templates and several others are designed by Hobart Jink. I'm going to leave the link to the templates in the description, where you can download them and check out many others he creates. This is a 1911, it is called the modernized variant, which is based on the M45A1, only the sights and the grips are different from the M45A1. I've decided to make this video because two years ago I have made this paper 1911 also by Hobart Jink. It was my first paper craft and it turned out very creased and wrinkled. The foldings weren't done properly, I didn't know how to do it properly then and I literally learned as I was going along. As you can see the quality hasn't turned out very good. Today, after almost three years, I have gained quite a lot of experience, so I've decided to do it again and better this time. And since I've had already done the classic version, I decided to make the modernized variant, which features front serrations, different sights, a longer barrel, Picatinny rails, holes on the trigger, a beaver tail grip safety, and the commander's hammer with a hole in it. If you want to do the classic version, the procedures are basically the same and the link will be on his page as well. So, let's begin! So first we're gonna print out all the templates. I have used a thicker paper, 180 grams or 48 pounds, and then we're gonna cut out all the templates like this. I'm using scissors and sometimes a utility knife for the holes and grooves. These are the small tabs that you have to fold afterward, so make sure to cut them all precisely. After cutting out it looks like this. And here I have cut out all the templates for the slide. So let's start making it. I'm using a blunt knife to trace all the folding lines so you can fold them nicely like this. This is very important and it's something I didn't do the first time two years ago. You have to trace every single line where you're going to fold afterwards so you can fold them properly. So here I'm tracing all the folding lines with a blunt knife. It can't be too sharp, otherwise it will tear the paper. So make sure to use a knife that isn't very sharp, but trace every single line where you're going to fold afterwards. Look how you can fold them nicely after you've traced the lines. And then we fold all the lines. Look how we fold all the tabs inwards. This is where it's going to be glued afterwards. Pay attention to this bottom part. This is the rail where it's going to slide afterwards. Notice the folding pattern. Some lines are folded inwards and some lines are folded outwards. Observe the picture on the left corner and fold them until you get that shape. This small piece here is the edge of the left wall of the slide, so we trace all the folding lines and then fold all the tabs inwards to glue them onto the wall of the slide. Here I'm folding all the tabs. And here I'm using a wooden stick to apply the glue, so you get just the right amount and don't apply too much. And then we glue it to the wall of the slide. 
here I'm applying just a little bit of glue to glue the edge of this notch Carefully glue the tab onto the wall of the slide First I'm gluing the straight parts It makes it easier to glue the curved sections afterwards Now we can better glue these two notches here. And then it looks like this. Here I made a piece of cardboard to glue inside to give it more structure and make it harder. This is something optional, you don't have to do this, but I'm doing it so it gets harder and doesn't crease that easily. And then we apply some glue on those tabs and close it. After closing it, it looks like this. Notice the shape of the rail. Here we're going to glue this curved edge of the slide. And our left wall of the slide is finished. Now we're going to start tracing the lines for the right wall of the slide. Again, use a knife which isn't too sharp to trace all the folding lines. And then we start folding it again, just like the previous part. Again, pay attention to the shape of the rails. Some lines are folded inwards and some outwards. And keep folding all the tabs. Again, I have made a piece of cardboard just the right size to glue inside so it gives it more structure and becomes harder. And again, apply some glue on the tabs and close it. Here again we glue this curved section of the edge And here we glue the edge of the ejection port Now the top wall of the slide, we trace all the folding lines again
this top part is curved. The white part is curved outwards and the grey part is curved inwards. And then apply some glue on this tab on the edge and close it. Now, using a toothpick, we carefully apply the glue on the ejection port rim. And then we carefully glue the ejection port rim. This takes a lot of time and a lot of patience to do it precisely. After gluing the rim, it looks like this. Now we glue each corner the same way. So now we have the three main parts of the slide. The left wall, the right wall and the top wall. Now we're going to work on the inside block of the slide. This is the main piece that is going to keep the two walls apart and will give the main structure for the slide. It is basically a rectangular box with a curved section on the top. I have made two pieces of cardboard to glue inside the two walls of the block. This is the spring front cap. I have rolled up some paper until I got a small cylinder of the exact diameter to use inside. We roll up everything and then glue it closed like this. Then we take this little part and glue on top here. This little piece will be the edge of the front cap end, which is this little raised part. We fold up these little tabs and then roll it up inwards like this. It will look like this and then we glue it on top of that cylinder there. Now we can add this little lid that goes on top. Now we're going to start working on these inner pieces, which are two identical pieces that go inside the slide and hold the spring front cap and keep everything oriented. Observe that there are three grey stripes and the two on the sides are curved. Now glue those tabs and observe that the two sides are curved like this. Now do the same for the other one and then we have two identical pieces like this. 
This is the curved bottom of slide. We fold it in half and glue it like this. And then curve it. Now these two inner pieces are glued inside on those markings. Now we glue the spring front cap inside there. See how it fits perfectly inside. Now we have all the main components of the slide, we can start assembling it. First, we glue the inside block on the back, aligning by the grooves of the rail. And this curved section goes in the front, aligning by those markings. And then we can add the other wall on top of it. Again, make sure to align it by the rails down there. It looks like this, and then we can add the top wall. Now these are the rear sections of the slide. We're gonna trace all the folding lines with a knife again. They also have this V-shaped section, which are the same shape as those rails on the slide. And with a toothpick, we carefully apply the glue on those tabs and start closing it. This takes a lot of time and a lot of patience to do it properly. Pay attention to that groove there, it is the shape of a V and it matches the rails on the slide. Look at the shape it's supposed to be. And now we close the top part. And we glue it onto the rear of the slide, paying attention to match that groove with the rails on the slide. And do the same for the other one. Now, this is something you don't actually have to do. My printer isn't very good and that grey area had a lot of stains on it, so I printed again a small grey square to glue on top of it. This is where the serrations are gonna be glued on. And now we can start gluing the outer faces, which will give a finishing look. Now let's start gluing the serrations. I have slightly traced with a pencil where each serration is supposed to be glued on. Then I apply just a little bit of glue with a toothpick and I glue the serration on top of it. And I keep doing it for all of them. And do the same for the other side. Now we can glue the top part. And it will look like this. Now we're gonna start working on the barrel. Again, I have previously rolled up some paper until I got a cylinder of the exact diameter. And I roll the templates around it so it gives more structure and becomes harder. We glue these parts on each side. And then we roll this thread protector around the tip of the barrel. Now, this piece is called the barrel bottom.
This is how it's supposed to look after gluing. Now I use a pencil as a mold to roll the spring guide. It is a small cylindrical piece that goes attached to the barrel bottom. It has a small lid that goes on each side. And then I've used some super glue to glue it to the barrel bottom. Now this is the bushing cap for the bushing tube. We stack four of these together with the gray one on top. Now I use the barrel as a mold to roll up the bushing tube. After gluing it closed and folding all the tabs outwards, I have made just another one of these pieces to insert the tube inside. It makes it easier to align it to those four stacked together. So now we glue it to that piece we made earlier. This bushing tube should fit perfectly inside the front of the slide. Now we insert the barrel in it and then we glue the barrel bottom on those markings on the barrel. Now we have a complete slide with a movable barrel. Let's start working on the sides. This is the front side. After folding and gluing it, it goes here on the top of the slide. Now the rear side is a bit trickier, it consists of three parts. This one is the base. This is the rear part. And this is the top part. It fits in here. Those tiny pieces are folded upwards. After gluing the rear and the top parts, it looks like this. Now we glue it onto the base. After finishing, the rear side looks like this. It goes here on the back. And our slide is completely finished. Now we're gonna start working on the frame. First we're gonna cut out the templates. I use a utility knife for the holes. Again, we trace all the folding lines with a knife. And we start folding it. This piece is the edge of the Magwell window. We carefully start gluing it here. And 
And after gluing everything, it looks like this. Now this edge goes right here. I have finished the right side, now let's start working on the left side. We carefully glue the straight section first, and then the curved section. This little piece is for the middle of the curve. It is curved and slanting. This piece is also curved and sloping. After gluing the edges, it looks like this. Last time I did it, the frame got quite creased, so this time I made a piece of cardboard slightly smaller to glue inside to make it harder. I have made two pieces of cardboard to glue on the top part here as well. They are slightly smaller than the actual shape to leave space for the tabs. I use cardboard from shoe boxes, which is about 1mm thick. This is not standard in paper craft, but I'm doing it to make it more durable and resistant. Now we're gonna add the inside face of the frame. Its left and right sides are folded upwards. We carefully glue the tabs on the edge of the Magwell window. And after gluing all the edges, it looks like this. These two panels are folded, closed and glued like this. And the first wall of the frame is finished. Do the same for the other side. I have used a black marker to hide all the white spots on the edges. Now we're gonna start working on the Picatinny rail. This is the left wall of the rail. Please ignore my improvised bandage. Notice this V shape. Again, I made a piece of cardboard to glue inside. And do the same for the other side. These pieces are glued here on the frame, make sure to align them straight. My little niece just came here and she's made me this gun out of clay. Back to what we were doing, we glue this piece here on the other side as well. Now this piece is called the center of frame, it is one of the main pieces that makes the structure of the gun, so I'm gluing small pieces of cardboard on all the straight sections. Then we fold all the tabs. And we start gluing them one by one. Then do the same for the other side, and we can close the rest of it.
This other piece is called the frame floor, it goes above the trigger, and I've also made a piece of cardboard to put inside. Now, this is the main spring housing, or the back of the magwell, and I'm adding pieces of cardboard on the straight sections as well. After folding and gluing, it looks like this, and we can start assembling the frame. The main spring housing goes on these markings here, the center of frame goes here, and the frame floor goes here. It looks like this, and then we can add the other wall on top. Again, I've traced the outlines with a black marker to hide all the stains. Now, this is the trigger guard. Again, I'm applying the glue with a toothpick so we don't put too much, and we carefully start gluing those tabs until we get this round shape. And this is the trigger guard after it's finished. I did it wrong, do not glue that top part. There's another piece that goes in there first, you will see it later. Now the trigger has got some very small parts. First, I'm gluing one side of this curved section. After gluing all the tabs, it looks like this. Now I glue the other side. Now we start making these cylinders for the holes. I roll them up around the barbecue stick to get the right shape. We insert it inside the hole until it becomes aligned with the outer faces. I use a pencil to align the edges of the hole. I apply some glue and use the pencil again to align it perfectly. Now I do the same for the other side. Now both sides are perfectly aligned. After doing it to all three of them, we can close the last part. I've used a black marker to trace the outlines and then it looks like this. We glue it in here, the trigger doesn't move. Now, the front of Magol consists of two curved sections. The first part is finished, and then we glue the other part on top. This last piece covers the edge. Now we glue it on the front of the frame. This is the base of the Picatinny rail. I'm adding two layers of cereal box inside of it to give it more structure, but I'm using cereal box because it isn't too thick. Now we start folding it. Observe the edge of the rail, it is also V-shaped, so some lines are folded inwards and some are folded outwards. The top part is curved. After gluing, I've traced the edges with a black marker again. 
Now we glue it on those two walls. Now this is the rear section of the rail. It is the piece that goes above the trigger guard, where I have glued by mistake earlier. I glue two pieces of cereal box inside, one on each side. After gluing it looks like this, and now I have to cut where I have glued earlier to insert it between the trigger guard and the frame. It goes in there. Now the rail sections, we fold and glue each of them individually. Observe that the edges are sloping. And then we glue them on those markings. After gluing all of them, it looks like this. Now these are the guide rails, they have a very tricky shape. I've added a picture here to help explaining how to fold it. Observe the shape, it's supposed to look like a little shelf. After finished, they look like this. Do the same for the other one. They are glued here around the magwell. After gluing both of them, it looks like this. Now we can attach the slide. I'm inserting a wooden stick here just to test it. Now the grip safety. I have previously traced all the folding lines with a knife. Notice that it has a small slope there. After gluing all the tabs, it looks like this, and now we can add the top section. Now the hammer is also a bit tricky. This piece is rolled up with the grey side facing inwards. It goes inside the larger hole. Again, I use a pencil to center it and align it. Now we glue the outside.
Now we can close the other panel. And this stripe goes on the outside of the round section. First I glue this tab and then I start gluing all the other tabs. After it's finished it looks like this. Again I have used a black marker to trace the outlines. Now this is the mag release. We fold all the tabs and then roll it up like this. That small piece goes on top and then we glue it on the frame. It is also just a dummy button. Now this is the thumb safety. After gluing the tabs on one side, I add a piece of cardboard inside to give it more structure. Then we can close the other side. Now this is the raised bump. It goes there on those markings. For the axis, I rolled up some paper around a toothpick until I got 3 mm in diameter. Then I cut it on the right length and I roll up those templates around it. I use super glue to attach it to the thumb safety. Now the slide stop. This is the raised bump on the slide stop. It goes there. And then I've used the same technique to make this axis and glue it here. Now the plunger tube is quite simple. and then the grips. The black parts are curved. We glue those tabs to close it. And this piece goes on the edge. This little piece covers that small notch. And there's another one on the top. I have traced the outlines with a black marker and then it looks like this. And then we do the same for the other one. Now we can start assembling it. First I glue the left grip and the plunger tube. Then I glue the right side grip. Now we attach the slide on the rails and insert the slide stop. Now we insert the grip safety and then the thumb safety is the same axis as the grip safety. Last we add the hammer and its axis.
Now the gun is finished. The only part left is the magazine. So let's start making the magazine. We start by folding all the tabs. The middle is curved like this. Then I'm adding two pieces of cardboard here. They don't reach all the way to the top because of the bullet and the follower that go up there. Now I glue those tabs and close it. After closing it, I add another piece of cardboard inside on the other side. Now we close the bottom part. And this is the floor plate. After gluing it closed, I apply a bit of super glue, insert a piece of cardboard and apply more super glue on top so it becomes very hard. Then I close the last tab. We glue it here on the bottom. Now this is the follower. And this is the top cartridge. I use a pencil as a mold to roll it up. After folding those little tabs inwards, we glue the back of the bullet. Since I don't have a color printer, I'm spraying the cartridge with the golden paint. Now the bullet. First, we roll it up and glue it closed like this. Then, I apply a bit of super glue on those little tabs and start folding them inwards until the bullet becomes pointy. Fold them one by one and the bullet starts to become pointy. I have painted the bullet with graphite powder and then we insert it in the cartridge. Now we insert the follower in the magazine and place the bullet on top. We press both downwards until they get in place and then apply a bit of glue on both. Our magazine is finished. And our gun is finished. As you can see, I have traced all the outlines with a black marker. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. In the end, I have sprayed a bit of transparent varnish on it, so it seals it and protects everything, and gives this shiny finish. So, thank you very much for watching! If you have watched it until the end, please leave a comment below! And if you liked it, please hit the like button, subscribe and share this video with your friends. And I see you on my next video.